Yeah, smart war games here. Let's check out close combat. Last stand on him. Give me a moment to get into my chat. Sound check. Give me a moment to get into my chat. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> There are basically two big groups of close combat games, the classic ones and the remasters. I think close combat last stand on him is a remaster of close combat a bridge too far. The differences are not that huge as some might expect. There are some technical improvements, but especially with those classics game getting uh, overhaul by GOG. It is debatable. But yeah, I will provide all games here and you can check for yourself because there is sometimes quite a price difference between the original and the remaster. And you can decide for yourself if it is, it, if it is warranting the price step. Yeah, first the manual. As the name suggests, this is focusing on Market Garden, the airborne operations and the drive of the armored force. To this very date, debated if this was a good call or not. Market Garden. Some say, despite it's not reaching its operational goals, it's still inflicted a blow on the Germans, I'd say, yeah, was a try, but not a good one, whatever. But the game is focusing on it and on its operations. That is a manual, you can stop the video if you want to read in detail. Let's start the game. Yeah, this game is offering full HD resolutions. I will stick with 1600 by 900 because I made good experience with this resolution offering a good middle solution. But you can, in this game again, in the remaster, you can scale your UI, you can use higher resolutions. But keep in mind that units might still appear to be very small. Yeah, let's exit it and start it again. Is it not booting up in a uh, full screen? Normally it should. Wait, I need to quickly check out. Is it only the menu? Yeah, this is a quite new behavior I see here. What is the problem? Okay, we will put it into full HD. And normally it runs us with lower resolutions in this. I'm not sure if this is a unique problem to last and unham. Normally if you remove this framed window you get a full screen option. Okay, we have full screen. Good, yeah, options, you already saw them. And yeah, you have the usual bootcamp options in order to train if you are new to the series. And let's check out, you have battles. That's the amount of...
Okay, better. That is a battleless amount. Quite some operation we talk later. It is basically mini campaigns. And yeah, the pinnacle of this is again the campaigns. And yeah, wait, before I do anything, I might hit then the scale option. Yeah, even the main menu scales. And you have this different sectors that were part of the market garden operation. Or you can play a grand campaign. September 17, 1944. Your paratroops land simultaneously in three sectors. Eindhoven, Nijmegen and Arnhem. Over the next two days, you must take and hold key roads and river crossings between Eindhoven and Arnhem Bridge. At 1700 hours, the massive column of British 30 Corps breaks through the German lines and heads north into Holland. They expect the roads and bridges to be secured before their arrival, but will lend assistance if necessary. Though German resistance is expected to be light, speed is essential. Securing the bridges along the route is your highest priority. If you succeed, 30 Corps will punch a hole into the German heartland and the war in Europe could soon be over. Yeah, very small video. I guess the original video was designed for 640 resolutions, but still great to have them. Uh, that is new. You have an uh, introduction briefing. I like it. Because many of those campaigns simply start on the screen. And it's one of those operation campaigns. Best way to navigate is using the minimap. Resolution is quite low and the map is of course convoluted because Market Garden was uh, yeah, quite convoluted experience as you drop para paratroopers airborne forces into the death of the enemy while your armored forces need to move up to secure those bridges or, yeah, in conjunction with the airborne operations. So if you look for complex operations, this might be your call. And as I already showcased in other close combat videos, you have formations. You can click them here. You will get the strength of the single platoons or units. Everything is named. And they will battle against depending on what you do with them against German formations but not get immediately eradicated or succeed immediately just by winning a single battle but you need to keep in mind that those formations are big and require several battles to, to whittle down. So for example we can move this unit here. Um, it's not a serious playthrough, I just want to showcase it uh, we have several squads of the 1st platoon, 2nd platoon and support teams. There's even more. And yeah, I'm not sure if this worked out. Could be there's some limitation in the first turn. I think now we can move. Was just an overview. You can hold the mouse button and then that is the best way, I guess. Yeah, let's move those guys forward. That is even possible. Are they already in contact with what is this? Ah, they're already in contact with German forces. That's why they can't move. Almost everybody is in contact with some sort of German forces, yeah. I wasn't perceiving this as a tactical symbol. But there are some German forces here. Almost everybody is occupied by them. We could have pumped up this force here, but we skipped the movement phase. It's now the combat phase. 
and uh, yeah we have, will have a lot of battles commands let's check out the tactical screen first battle will start here between the this armored force here and it seems like a force of Fallschirmjägers, German airborne and again in this game you can you have uh, every formation has a OOB pool and you can decide for yourself what you want to bring to the battle every battle allows you to bring 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 units it seems I think, I think it is different in the modern games you can bring more but for example if you don't like the scout group you can remove it and instead bring a sh firefly yeah this is one of those games where you are not limit ah, okay this limit there is support vehicles infantry Tree, but looks like you can also bring a vehicle in the support tab. This was changed in the more modern titles, I guess for multiplayer in order to prevent that you will do some um, gamey oh, um, battle OOBs like I don't know, 20 Shermans or whatever. But yeah, looks like support and vehicle tab is allowing you to bring whatever you want and infantry as you can guess. Yeah, so you can also bring a Daimler scout car, but yeah, let's, let's stick to a Firefly, because it's the only proper anti-tank weapon for us. Because those normal Shermans, they are more designed, they are more multi-role, and the Firefly is capable of taking out those modern German tanks. Mortars, yeah, as I mentioned several times, Indirect weapons are really powerful in CC. Could even upgrade to a third inch mortar or not. Yeah, looks like three inch mortar is for the support tab. Ah, there are some points distribution. Yeah, looks like this game handles it with points. And yeah, you can view the map in order to get an, and where this battle is situated if you need information you can check every sing single soldier of those units that are committed to the battle and their skills you can even rename units unfortunately as I mentioned you can't remain uh, rename units on soldier level only on squad or squadron yeah squad or vehicle level could I don't know get your own name into the game which can be of course add a lot of to immersion and excitement but it would be of oh. uh, would be of course here the command shaman would be a good choice and yeah you can also preview the OOB of your enemy Ah, uh, could be that they changed something here. Because in some games it is more like a cheat because you see all OOB of your enemy, which is too much information. And then you can act accordingly. It gives you a very big advantage, perhaps too big. And this here, I'm not sure either. This is the complete OOB of those Germans, which could be. Or you don't, you only have a limited. Inform uh, you only have limited information about what the enemy is bringing. That would be quite realistic, but I can't tell currently if this is really the complete OB or if those slots are simply not accessible to your information. Yeah, let's go into the tactical screen. Yeah, I can already tell this is again coming with those absolute beautiful graphics. of close combat. Yeah, I'm currently running in full screen because I couldn't figure it out quickly on the stream why 1600 by 900 is not working or putting me into windowed. Normally you can lower the resolution, this might make sense if you want to have, because there's no further zoom level, you can get go into the tactical screen very good. But you see everything is very small. It is fine for my eyes. Did I use the function? 
I might need to restart. Normally the interface is bigger if you use the rescale option. So don't be afraid if you think, oh damn it, that's really small information here. You can usually make it bigger. And normally you can go full screen also in lower resolutions. In the worst case, simply lower the resolution of your win windows. And then it definitely, I'm pretty sure it will go full screen. I can't do it on stream because it will screw up my screen, stream if I lower resolutions in windows. Okay, there's some blinking, new, what? It's quite some strobe here. Yeah, and you play, um, there, I already mentioned it, check my close combat list. The way controls are absolutely amazing, very, very quick paced. Absolutely no problem here. Except for, I think, um, facing is a bit complicated. Could be easier. Perhaps there is a hotkey, if somebody knows, can tell me in chat or in comments. That could be a bit more. Okay, we have Platoon, HQ, Rifle Group, move here. What is your problem? But this is a setup zone. Okay. Yeah, not sure. I guess one of those guys by accident hit the corner, the, the, the edge, and yeah, bring a machine gun with you. Ah, come on. Don't tell me stories. Platoon HQ, stay behind. Platoon HQ, here one, please. You get off this road, bring the brand on the left flank. What is this? Piat. Piat might be here situated to with the commander. Who are these guys? Mortar. Mortar might be indeed a good. Uh, not in a building, of course. Uh, get off the road, please. But yeah, if you use the command vision, it is even easier because you have those little flags. Look at this. Uh, can, can quickly move units. And you can also give orders from here if you. Start, for example, and you go here. You can simply fly out orders by holding, and you also see enemy movements can immediately react. It's now a bit small because of my resolution, but there's some graphical glitches. Yeah, wait, 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 fire immediately, fire on the infantry. Should we already lose vehicles? How did I end up? Fireflies you attacking, a stuck. Yeah. And I should manage to. I didn't see those Shermans here, and that's me. I just playing to show to showcase you. Yeah, we lost the tank. But normally you want to of course put some consideration into your movement. You can drag those waypoints here, for example, here. It's like very intuitive. So the Stuck is took out a Firefly. Yeah, not bad. They took out the most important tank. Very good here by the German AI. Let's move up the infantry squads and then MMG. Mortar is firing and yeah, looks like a lot of infantry got killed here. Let's shift the mortar to this position here. Tanks are moving up. Not sure why this guy is not firing, I guess because he the Stuck 3 deployed a smoke screen. And we can move up to the road, get ready to engage the Stuck from close range in case we have problems to penetrate it. Because the Stuck is currently situated to the left. But now he seems to turn, could be that he, even with the smoke, he's seeing, uh, he's aiming for the infantry, which is a good thing. Firefly is aiming for the Stuck. Ah, Stuck is aiming for the Firefly. Ay, ay, ay. Something happened to the to this tank. Yeah. Come on, Firefly. Responding. Is this... Yeah, I wonder if this blinking is... Is it part of the game? This blinking of the... I'm coming up with my tank here. Stuck destroyed, let's move up. But not the Firefly, not the Firefly, the Firefly you want to keep in reserve for anti-tank threats. Let's move up the sh 
Shaman 5. If this is even viable here for this complex narrow point. Platoon HQ move forward. Stack hound, yeah, the stack hound might deploy on the flank. Yeah, I'm not playing seriously, I'm just showing you, you get an idea of this game. It is quite an authentic game, as I already mentioned. Um, indirect weapons are somewhat really extremely powerful, but they are limited in ammunition. Sure, is this motor already out of ammunition? Access request truce. Ah, they're already. <laughs> Access already requesting uh, ceasefire. <laughs> no way, no way, no way. Yeah, here, medium motor. Ah, okay, yeah, it was simply. I mean, the access. Did, so I guess the OOB of the access was. Minus excess victory while the excess morale broke. Uh, oh, okay, whatever. I think that's not that important, but the, what is more important, don't think the screen is not really important, is that they lost their forces. Every All losses are translated into the campaign map, and those units are, yeah, you see they are red, yellow, or um, orange which indicates that they are even worse condition and while we are in good condition so over time multiple battles those guys will wither even because that doesn't make sense the, um, the, the Germans requested a ceasefire because they were absolutely broken but one because they, they control all victory points yeah perhaps that's the reason why the time function is disabled I won't pay that too much attention to those calculations. I guess it's more important what losses and uh, how your operational thing is faring. And yeah, now about operations. Operations are limited mini campaigns, usually resolving around um, specific formations. You have a background. And you see this, for example, the AO. You don't have the complete map. It's basically an abstraction of the main campaign. All of this is not important. Only this is important. I don't see my forces. Where are they? Are they jumping? Or what is it? Germans, Germans. Uh -huh. Yeah, where are they? Ah, here they are. And that's it. Yeah, you will have Germans have two or three formations you have two formations and same here you will battle only about this limited area and units that explode this get, get destroyed will be removed you might receive reinforcements perhaps but I'm not sure I guess in those limited campaigns not might happen you can play everything of this in multiplayer this would be absolutely a blast in multiplayer especially if you don't have that much time at hand and yeah, those guys are moving, and those guys, let's get them into moving as well, and then you execute. Ah, they even moved into our space. Looks like the Germans are interested in us. And I better will resolve, same here. You have OOBs, and everybody that gets killed is lost forever. And same for the opponent. Yeah. So yeah, that is a remake of, I think, close, what was it, Close Combat 2? That is a remake of Close Combat A Bridge Too Far. Last Stand Arnhem. Offering you higher resolutions. I can remember too, I think only offered resolutions up to 1024. And this also offers you some sort of scaling options. Perhaps I need to activate this one. But normally those options allow you to scale the interface bigger. I usually like to play 1600 by 900 and yeah I guess it is a good idea if you also have this issue that you end up windowed even without this 
Normally if I deactivate this, it will remain full screen. Mm, put it, put, put your Windows resolution at 1600 by 900 and then I expect you will also end up full screen and offering you some op more options. But sure, it is a better build, the difference is not big. I can't tell about uh, if there are more operations or campaigns. I don't have it memorized, but you can check for yourself those videos and tell what's the difference. All those games basically up from starting with CC2 are really enjoyable even from a moder modern standpoint. Especially if you go for those GOG releases, because they already basically also received an update. And having rest you need to decide for yourself if you want to stick with the original or with the remaster. Okay, let's that's it. Let's stream the next CC.